Today, I have an official statement for you. The front of news is back. Congratulations, Bartosz. I, it's nice to see you here today. Hello, everyone. I'm Bartosz and I'm really happy to be here with you with the new front and news series. Today, we have seven amazing news for you. What do we have today? Okay, so first we're gonna talk about React version 18. The next is next 12.1. Then we're gonna talk about Strapi version 4. The fourth news is Deno. Another news will be from CSS Word. Then we're gonna jump to Safari 15.4 and Chrome 100. And last but not least will be Electron version 18. But first, let's watch intro. How was your week? Quite nice. I've got a lot of work to do, but I'm really happy to be here with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see it in your eyes. <laughs> yes, <You're> definitely. <laughs> Great. Be you're happy because we have amazing news today. So the first news is React. Version 18. So what's in? Most important feature in uh, React version 19 is concurrency. It's like a game changer, in my opinion, because it's all about uh, processing multiple simultaneous state updates. It is brand new concept and set of features that help with state update prioritization. It means that the urgent state updates can now be prioritized over less urgent long-taking updates. Uh, you can basically tell React uh, that a certain state update has a lower or higher priority than other state update and then React is able to treat the other updates with higher priority. Speaking about concurrency, we have now new feature like transitions. Uh, transitions is basically the part of the new concurrency concept. Uh, it's all about distinguishing between urgent and non-urgent updates. So we have urgent updates like uh, direct interactions like typing, like clicking, pressing and so on. And we have transition updates, which means that transition the UI from one view to another view. Speaking about transitions, uh, we have now two new features in uh, React. So it's basically use transition hook and start transition function. Use transition hook is about starting transitions, uh, which means including a value to track a depending state. And start transitions is the method that starts transition when the hook cannot be used. Another new improved improvement is uh, automatic batching. So it means that um, batching is when React groups multiple state updates into a single re-render for better performance uh, issues. Previously, without automatic batching, we only batched updates inside event handlers in React. Uh, for now, we have also a possibility to update inside of promises, set timeouts, uh, native event handlers, or uh, any other events that were not batched in React by default. So uh, basically, with automatic batching, the updates will be now batched automatically. Oh, it's a lot of features yes. this time. Yes, but it's not all <laughs> yet. You can check documentation and read by yourself. So another new features in React version 18 is uh, information about server components, which will basically happen in the next few months and now are on alpha development stage. A server components will be something which executes on the server and will work with the client side components. So it will enable React to be more like a full stack framework, not only the UI. Last but not least, we have new suspense features in React version 18. Suspense lets us specify the loading state for a part of the component tree if it's not yet ready to be displayed. In React version uh, 18, uh, the support was added for Suspense on the server and expanded its capabilities using concurrent rendering features. Speaking about new features in React version 18, uh, it's worth mentioning about new client and server rendering APIs. We have now two new functions. It's create root and hydrate root. Create root is basically the new method to create a root to render on unmount. So we will now use it instead of React DOM render. It's worth mentioning that the new features in React 18 uh, don't work without it. So we have to change it with uh, our new projects when we start. That's it about the first news. Yes, uh, now we're gonna jump to next. next.
So what's about Next? Speaking about new version of Next uh, 12.1, we have to mention uh, on-demand uh, incremental static regeneration feature. Next.js uh, exposes a function unstable revalidate, uh, which allows us to revalidate, revalidate individual pages that use get static props. So it basically means that for us it's easier to update our site when content from our headless CMS is created or updated and the crash metadata changes. So something like prices, description, category, reviews, content, posts, and so on. What is more, you can now manually purge the Next.js cache for a specific page on demand. Next important thing worth, worth mentioning in Next.js uh, version 12.1 is improved SWC support. It was introduced as a part of Rust-based compiler that takes advantage of a native compilation. Basically, with version 12.1, Next.js added support to the Next.js compiler for uh, things like styled components, import source, legacy decorators, Relay, remove React properties, and remove console. Uh, another thing is that uh, with the new version of Next.js, uh, is that uh, we don't now need to automatically configure Jest for us. Next.js now automatically configures Jest for us using the Rust based Next.js compiler and it transforms files including auto mocking style sheets, uh, loading environments, ignoring node modules from test resolving transforms and so on. Speaking about SWC, we have now faster uh, minification and faster image optimization. In Next.js version 12.1, we have also uh, self-hosted Next.js improvements, which means that we have now 80% smaller Docker image for self-hosted Next.js applications. Some time ago, Strapi presented version four and it has a lot of features Yes, it has plenty of new features like Strapi design system, the new plugin API, improved database query engine, more powerful REST and GraphQL APIs, and many other. Speaking about uh, database changes uh, in Strapi, uh, there is now a new way of um, queries to the database are done. Now it's possible uh, to select which fields and relations you are going to load from the database and you can then make complex queries on components, uh, sort and filter data and do things like that. The next one is Dino 1.20 release. Speaking about new Dino version 1.20, there are new features like faster calls into Rust, two new subcommands like Dino task and Dino bench, changes like low level API to upgrade HTTP connections, and dedicated interface for TCP and Unix connections. What is also worth mentioning is that Dino has now auto compression for uh, HTTP response bodies. It means that when a client re request supports either for gzip or broadly compression, and your server responds with a body that basically isn't a stream, the body will automatically compress it with Dino without any need to configure it for you. Regarding faster calls into Rust, we can say that communication of the layer is speeded up to be like 60% faster. So it's like a big change for Dino in terms of Rust. Amazing. So what's next? Next, we're gonna mention some new CSS feature which came up in 2022. There are lots of changes regarding new CSS improvements but uh, I would like to mention three of them. So firstly, we would uh, jump to the HES pseudo class. Basically, HES is a pseudo class which enables us to select an element depending on its descendants. It means that you will not uh, even uh, have to write all the values uh, like comma separated and, and it will be like easier for us to grab some uh, elements from the DOM. Next breaking change regarding CSS in 2022 is cascade, cascade layers. Cascade layers is something which enables us and gives us more power of using cascading part of CSS. With cascade layers, we have now possibility to split our CSS code into several layers via the layer at rule. So basically it means that you can now effectively group your CSS code into smaller chunks 
Polaris as it is called. Do you have more breaking changes in here? Yes, I would like to also speak about accent colors. Accent color property is uh, all about changing colors in the form elements. So everything like checkboxes, radio buttons, inputs and progress bars and so on. We all developers know that styling an input uh, is kind of pain for us and all browsers treat it a little bit differently. Now with uh, accent color properties, you have a possibility to easily apply a color that fits your brand and also mm, to keep the browser default input. That's great. Finally, uh, developers will be happy. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm not sure, but still. <laughs> the next news on our list is Safari 15.4 and Chrome 100. Yes, speaking about the new version of Safari, we have some crucial changes regarding lazy loading of the images. From version 15.4, uh, Safari added support for lazy loading images with loading attributes on the image. Basically, it provides developer a uh, possibility to defer loading images until the user scrolls um, near them. And you can just do it by adding a loading attribute on the image element. WebKit also added support for cascade layers and has pseudo classes. So now we can use it also in Safari. Another new improvements regarding Safari version 15.5 are updates to the web inspector. The latest updates for the web inspector provides us new helpful tools regarding new CSS features of cascade layers and layer rule set. So what's in Chrome? Chrome version 100, there is no special changes, but there are some things regarding cookie management, API for better screen management between screen browsers and some improvements regarding security. Mm -hmm, interesting. And the last one is Electron. What's in? Regarding Electron version 18, uh, we have some support for more color formats in set background color function. We have also added focus and blur events to web contents. And another thing worth mentioning is removing the old browser windows proxy. It was based off implementation of window.open. This removes um, the native window open option from the web preferences. Yeah, and we uh, always give links in the description so you can read the full version by yourself. Is that it? I guess, yes. Oh, we don't have more news, unfortunately. <laughs> but next time it will be more news and more interesting features for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. High five. See you next time. Check other videos on our Front and House channel and see you next time. Bye. Bye.